Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Out of the depths I have cried to you. O Lord, hear my voice. With my whole heart I want to praise you. O Lord, hear my voice. I will, I will wait, wait for, for the Lord. Lord. My, my soul, soul waits, and in his word do I hope. A reading from John chapter 6. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him, because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages will not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon, Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people, Jesus said. Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place. So they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they, give up, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. This is the word of the Lord. Good evening, everyone. Tonight's reflection, and let's remember this is a reflection. This is simply my take on the gospel reading for Friday, which is from the book of John. In this gospel reading, we have Jesus feeding the 5,000. This is the only miracle which is mentioned in all four gospels. So we kind of have a feeling that this is something very important and it's probably something that historically really happened. I don't think it's likely anytime soon that any of us will be asked to feed 5,000 people. <clears throat> but life has surprises and challenges <clears throat> and we're often called upon to do the maximum with the minimum of resources. We often believe that we're doing all that we can with what we have. And we're asked at the same time to continue to do more. How do we do this? Well, somehow we reach down inside and we find something somewhere and we rise and we fulfill what is asked of us. It's our responsibility to do all that we can after all and we're asked in many ways and many places to perform those responsibilities. In today's reading, <clears throat> Jesus hands over this responsibility to the disciples instead of taking it on himself. He sees 5,000 people and he says, how on earth are we going to feed all these people? And of course the disciples uh, agree with him that it would take all the money of Galilee to have enough to buy the bread that was necessary to feed them. <clears throat> Nevertheless, they go about trying to perform the task which Jesus has given over to them. And they manage to find five barley loaves and two fish. Hardly enough. Nevertheless, not to be dismayed, they give it to Jesus and he says, okay, yes, give it to me. 
and he blesses it. He says a prayer over it, and he blesses it. And he says, have the people sit down, and the disciples begin to pass out the barley and the two fish. Well, somehow, it's enough. And 12 baskets extra to boot. How can this be? How can this happen? I ask myself this even as I read this today and I have reflected and read this passage many times. Well, and here we come to my reflection part of this. Um, here's what I think may have happened. After the multitude has sat down and Jesus has taken the bread and the fish and he's blessed it and the uh, the disciples begin to pass it out and things are passed from hand to hand well in those days nobody went anywhere unprepared it's not like today where there are signs saying turn in here for the fast foods of your choice people took what they needed they had a bottle of water a wine skin maybe a couple loaves of bread or some pita and they had fruit, dried fruit and fish. So when the food starts to come around to them, they quietly take out what they have in their pockets or their bags and they add it in. And lo and behold, there was enough food and then some to fulfill everybody's wants. 12 baskets. 12 disciples are given what is needed. Today we are told over and over and over that there are shortages here, there, and everywhere. Shortages of food, shortages of gas, shortages of toilet paper. So many things. Yet, when a need arises and people are called upon to help, something happens. They come together and needs are met. And they're fulfilled abundantly. We take what little we have or what little we think that we have, our time, our talent, our resources. When they are given willingly over to God, he blesses them and they become a resource, a talent, a gift that exceeds what is needed for a time and a place. I think that we have a lesson here to learn that when we willingly give something, somehow it winds up being more than is needed. Rather than hanging on to something, holding it close to our chests and hiding it because we're afraid to let it go, that we might not have enough. When we let it go, God does indeed bless it. Each Sunday, as we begin to gather our things and leave church, the deacon says to the people of God, go in peace. That is to go out um, without fear but with faith and with God by our side. We're called to love, to go with love, not just for ourselves, but for everyone we encounter, everyone that we meet. And we're called to serve, to serve the Lord. And the Lord is in everything and everyone that we meet. If you do this, you will be living abundantly. Your gifts and your talents will be multiplied. I'm not saying it's easy. As a matter of fact, I know from my own experience that it's not. But our part is to take all that we have, nevertheless, even if it doesn't seem like enough, and to give it to God. It's our responsibility. And then God will bless what we have given and he'll multiply it and we get it back bigger and better than we expected. 
and it will meet the needs of ourselves and for a hungry world that we are living in today. Amen. Continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us ask God to protect us this night. O God, the life of all who live, the light of the faithful, the strength of those who labor, and the repose of the dead. We thank you for the blessings of the day that is past, and humbly ask for your protection through the coming night. Bring us in safety to the morning hours, through him who died and rose again for us, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us ask God for the presence of Christ among us. Lord Jesus, stay with us for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in the scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Let us now take a moment of silence and offer our petitions to God. Remembering the people that have entrusted themselves to our prayers. We pray for the sick, especially Michael and Vanessa. We pray for their healing and for those who are taking care of them. We pray for the repose of the soul of the dead, especially Josephine. We entrust her soul to God and also we pray for the comfort of those who are grieving. We remember before God our loved ones who are absent from us, people that we are missing. May God keep them safe. We remember those who are in danger this night. We remember those who do not have a home we pray for shelter for the homeless, food for the hungry, friend for the lonely. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am placing my soul in my body in thy safe keeping this night, O God. In thy safe keeping, O Jesus Christ. In thy safe keeping, O Spirit of perfect truth. The three who would defend my cause be keeping me this night from harm. Amen. <laughs>